One of the things I want to do today is start off by taking us back to the New Testament, to the book of Acts, to the writings of Paul. And as I've done quite a bit of research and study, I've realized that there's a significant difference, a drastic, stark contrast in many ways from what we do and how we live our lives as Christians and how they lived their lives back in the first century as the early church. So in a sense, I believe that we need to return to our roots. We need to recover vintage faith. There needs to be a sense in which the church is retrofitted to God's original purpose for us. And I just want to contrast some of the behaviors that we see in the church today and then compare that to what the church was intended to be as delineated in the New Testament. The church today focuses on church growth. What do I mean by that? Filling buildings with people. But the church in the New Testament was focused on kingdom expansion. So it's not so much about filling churches with people as it is filling people with God. Filling people with the Lord himself, getting them discipled, getting them trained and equipped up so that they go out locally uh, as well as through into the nations of the world and that the fragrance of Jesus Christ is spread abroad through their life and the kingdom of God is expanded on the earth. The church today is about winning converts, right? Put up your hand if you want to receive Jesus today. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's a starting point. But the church in the book of Acts was, took it further. They were engaged in making disciples. Disciples, people that actually lived and became like Jesus Christ. Not just people who said a prayer, put up their hand, you know, ticks a, bo a box or whatever, but people who actually recognize their call to follow Jesus, to surrender everything, to become his disciple, to be conformed in his image and likeness, and to do his very works on the earth now. That's what we're called to be. The church today often focuses on instructing people in doctrine. You know, we have, in our more formal churches, of course, we have what we would say catechisms, and we have these uh, formal trainings that we bring people through. But I'm also talking about how we do discipleship today. In many ways, our discipleship in the 21st century is kind of like, hey, you know what, we're going to do this class, and if you, you know, start praying, start reading the Bible every day, you know, give money, uh, honor God with your, with your time and all of these things, then you know what? That's awesome. You, you, you know, and if you have the right doctrine and if you believe in the Trinity and you believe in, in the deity of, of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit and that salvation is by faith, you know, and it's a work of grace through and, and all of that, which is very true and very important, but unfortunately it becomes just a, a mental or intellectual exercise where we agree with certain things, but it's just stuck up here and it hasn't gone down to the place where it affects our life. And so the church in the book of Acts was, even though there was this thing called the Apostles' Doctrine that they continued steadfastly in, I don't believe it was, you know, a class, like a, what we have today, a class for new believers. I believe it was very different and there was a sense that they imparted revelation to people. And revelation is spiritual and it, it opens the eyes of our heart, not, not just, uh, you know, giving us more information, but it results in transformation of life. All right. The early, the church today is about gathering, right? Bums and chairs. Sorry. But the, the church in the New Testament was about going. It wasn't about how many people can we give? Do we have an attendance? If you go to a conference especially in America, and you, 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 know, you meet with pastors, and I'll tell you, some of the conferences, it's absolutely ridiculous. So how many people are you running in your church? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. So, so how big is your building? Oh, yeah. What's your, what's your budget? And no kidding, right? But guess what? On Judgment Day, 
as ministers of God, we're not going to be asked or called on the carpet by the Lord for any of these things. It's not our attendance. It's not how much money we were able to raise. It has nothing to do with how big our buildings were. But it's all about raising up people to become like Christ. People that as they go out into the world, they make a difference. They're impacting their culture and their generation. And guys, there has been a problem in the 20th century, particularly with the builder and boomer generations, that we've been so focused just on building church, build edifices, and, and bringing people in that we've neglected the mission of people becoming like Jesus Christ, manifesting the fruit of the Spirit, walking in the anointing and power, and becoming the incarnation of Christ on the earth so that where we go, we bring his glory and power to our generation. All right, forgiveness from the past. Yeah, that's an amazing thing. Thank God that our sins are forgiven, amen? He throws him to the sea of forgetfulness. Corey Ten Boom, who was actually um, put in a, in a prison camp um, during World War II, a prisoner of war camp, she said that God throws our sins into his sea of forgetfulness and then posts a no fishing sign. Isn't that amazing? Can't bring it up. As far as the east is from the west, so God has removed our sins from us. That's amazing. But you know what? There's more to it than forgiveness from the past. That's just the beginning. God has called us into a lifestyle of power from the present. Power for the present. Not just that I'm forgiven for what I used to be, but power so I can be a son of God, so I can manifest his, per, his power on the earth, live free from sin, not just so I'm forgiven and I keep falling and keep messing up, and, and then, but I can get up and just ask him to forgive me, but we're not changing. We're still in bondage. We're still controlled by sin, whereas Paul says sin has no dominion over you. You're not under law, but you're under grace, Romans 6, 14, so that we overcome sickness. We overcome the works of the devil and, and the things that are in our life that are holding us back so that we become like Jesus himself. And, of course, there's some today in the church that espouse, oh, man, one day it's going to be good because we're going to leave this planet and go to heaven. And, you know, some of the, some of the songs even that, that we used to sing, you know, I'll fly away one day, right? Everybody will be happy over there. Do you remember that hymn? Everybody will be. It was written by people that were depressed, it was written by people, some of them were slaves, honestly. And look, they, they're in a place where, yeah, everything will be happy. I realize that life can be difficult. Life can be tough. And there is a sense in which Jesus said, I'll wipe away all your tears. There will be no more pain. There will be no more suffering. Revelation says that. But guys, no matter what we're going through in this life, it's not just leaving here and going to heaven. God wants to bring heaven to earth. Jesus wants to bring things. And that's what he taught his disciples, that we're to pray that his kingdom would come and his will would be done on earth as it is in heaven. So it's more than leaving earth to go to heaven. It's bringing heaven to earth. 